everyone. Welcome to the another episode of Exotics Radio. I almost messed that up again. <laughs> if you haven't been, uh, haven't known us for very long, I tend to mess things up. And it is six o'clock Monday morning here in Sweden with yours truly all the way from her own vacation out of the hotel of I don't know where. <laughs> She's keeping it somewhere secret far, far away. <laughs> She's keeping a secret from me. Uh, so, anyways, yours truly. I told you at the beginning of the last week we were going to be covering the Bracky Palma Homori and mixing a bit of music like we always do for tradition. Uh, do you have anything you'd like to add before we launch our very first song? Well, I found a lot of interesting things. That's all I can really say right now. I mean, I'll go into depth a little bit more. But guys, please bear with me as I do this. I am not a scientist. And I promise you, these words can come out totally backwards. But just know, I am learning as we go along. That's all I need to say before we go into this. <laughs> wait, wait, hold on. You're saying you're not a scientist? I am not. Because I thought it was like Brachiosaurus... Hamari Anani or something like that, you know. So I, I mean, I'm learning. I'm learning. No, no it's the Brachy Palma Homori. It's, it's straight out of Mexico. It's a new world tarantula. But we'll get into that further as we go. Right now, we are going to be playing. Oh my gosh, I didn't even have a list up here. I'm all over the place this morning. Uh, this is what happens when you try to do a show before coffee. So just bear with us, or bear with me at least. Uh, right now, so we're that's going okay. To be... Well, you don't have your coffee. I have mine. Just saying. <laughs> Have a sip for me. All right. So every Doing time right I <laughs> so every time mm. I fall by Hallman.
And that was Every Time I Fall by Hallman. Welcome back, everybody. I am Cracks, your host with yours truly, the best co host yes. ever. See? Uh, oh. Right now, we're talking. <laughs> You sound so well, shocked. Thanks. You sound shocked. I do. <laughs> like, I was shocked. You, like, said I was the best co-host ever, and I was like, oh, me? Thanks. It's because I haven't had coffee, that, mu- that much coffee yet, so that's that's why that's why I'm being nice. This is what happens when I don't have coffee. <laughs> She's nice when she doesn't have coffee, and, well, I'm energetic and awake when I have my coffee. <laughs> oh, it's a good mixture. It's a good mixture. We're going to be talking about the Brachypelma homori. It's a vulnerable species all the way from Mexico. Uh, it's a new world tarantula. And do you remember what new world means? Um, I just love how we're trying to do a, a show and I hear recordings in the background. It's like, I'm not the only person in this house. Why am I not the only person in this house? It's because somebody <laughs> decided to stay up all night and making very loud noises. We won't say any names. We won't accuse anybody, a.k.a. my brother. <clears throat> um, AKA, anyway, I'll throw yeah. people under the bus. Yes. <laughs> Of course. My other half too, guys. My other half too. If you guys can hear, I do apologize. I'm actually sitting in a closet right now, just so I don't have any noise. <laughs> so, no uh, joke. I see you're in the closet about tarantulas. Is that what this is? Is it this- is. You know, I'm in the closet because I'm so excited about tarantulas that I'm going to jump out of the closet when I'm done and go, I need like 50 of these. So, <laughs> well, when it comes to Breaking Pomo Homori, you definitely need about 50 of them. I ordered two of them from Jungle Brothers and I want to give them a great shout out because they are incredible. Their customer service, the, the time and manner which the package came was awesome. A little bit of a rough patch because it got cold, but I honestly don't think they realized how cold it was going to get. Uh, this is Sweden, so it could be warm. It, they could say it's going to be warm and then it's going to be cold. With this time of year, pretty much they wouldn't have needed a heat pack if it was like any time other than this. But of course, you know, bad luck. Uh, but the tarantulas came out fine and they did promise me next time that there would be a, a, a heat pack. Uh, but again, who is that in the back? <laughs> that would definitely be the boyfriend talking, guys. I am sorry. I am oh so my sorry. God. I'm even in the closet. <laughs> Yeah, I was going to say, I was like, wow. He is gaming, and he takes gaming very, very seriously, guys. (laughs) All right. So, anyway. We'll edit him out. (laughs) I'm trying to. I don't think I can. Not ready to throw a slipper out there. Shush. (laughs) Oh, you hear me all the way from Sweden. Doc! (laughs) Doc! She's coming! (laughs) Doc, Doc, (laughs) goose! Did you leave a goose egg on the back of the head? Why not, right? (laughs) Oh, hey, there you go. Um, I wonder if that's where that came from with the goose egg on the back of the head. It, for everybody who doesn't know what a goose egg is, it's a big swollen knot on, on your head. That's what we'd call a, a goose egg, if I, if I remember yes. correctly. Right? Yeah. So probably duck, duck, bap, goose. Yeah. Okay. I, I mean, that's how I would play it. Okay. So if, if I'm not going to go on, you guys don't hear me. I'm going on mute. So you guys don't pick up all this noise in the background. Uh, it's fine. It's fine. Um, so uh, the Brachypelma Fomori, I, I asked you if you knew what it meant to be an old world or not old world new oh my world. gosh i need coffee new world yes new it's world. a new world why is it classified as a new world i don't know but i can find out i had all my notes guys i promise you i had all my notes and i went to go save everything and everything got erased for all my shows right now and um i was just like oh okay that's cool i I guess I don't need need my notes. I guess I'm just going to have to wing it. And that's exactly what I'm doing. Because, I mean, I have been working hard. I was even doing this while I was in the hospital the other day. Um, oh, oh, okay. Uh, New World Tarantulas, um, they're called that because New World Meeting is in North and South America. When tarantulas were discovered, they were New World. Yes, they, were, they came from the New World. Thank you, thank you Columbus. The same old we world. the ocean blue. <laughs> Hey, I have to give props to Columbus. There's a lot of people, there's a lot of, uh, what do you call it, uh, controversy around Columbus. But I'm sorry, back in the day, if you sailed into the unknown, that had no political standing. That was just a guy trying to explore what hasn't been explored yet. So I have to give him props for going through all of that nasty weather, getting turned around because of storms, and then ended up in a continent that he didn't know was it. Like I said, they called it the New World, and I can imagine back then it was probably a New World than the Discovery. And imagine finding this huge, huge uh, spider when you're always used to the ones about, about the size of your thumbnail. <laughs> <laughs> and then all of a sudden this thing that's the size of your palm is walking across <laughs> in front of you like hey how's it you going George? freaked out when he's seen that i would have freaked out like i would have been scared at first i was like where's my fly swatter and i would have invented a fly swatter at that point i'll be like get over here get over here 
before I knew that they were not mean, you know, I mean, they, they can be mean and some are venomous, some not so venomous. And we're going to get into that with the red meat tarantula today. Um, the Brachiosaurus harmonica. Um, <laughs> I like that. Name. It's, it's Brachiosaurus yes. harmonica. Okay. I'm going to tell you truly your, your tarantula has now lost the name. Truly. I am renaming that, that name. <laughs> Brachiosaurus harmonica. Yes. yes. I definitely would. I would. I think that would be a cool name for him. And I would totally be down with that. <laughs> Come here, Brachiosaurus. You know, I mean, I, I like that. Oh, dude, and it's not for a dinosaur, and I love dinosaurs. Not only that, but how many people can say, uh, what do you own? Well, I own a Brachiosaurus. <laughs> I'm a Brachiosaurus harmonica. What did you get? <laughs> oh, yes, that would be awesome. In other terms, a Mexican red meat. That is not a Brachiosaurus harmonica. It is now. <laughs> we renamed it. I don't understand why science has to have such crazy names for these tarantulas. Can you explain that? Do you know why they have to have such yeah, crazy Actually, I do. Um, because it, it all started off with, uh, back in the day, a gentleman, or I, I would love to say a lady, but uh, unfortunately, back then, we, they suppressed the knowledge of women back then. So, I mean, that was a thing. You know, Women weren't into the scientific field because they weren't allowed. <laughs> uh, in some cases, they were. I, I will. I'll, I'll keep that. But when it came to exploring, it was generally just the, the men that went. And for very obvious reasons, you know, it wasn't tr them trying to be mean spirited or anything about it. It was more like, do you really want a woman on a ship full of men for six to seven months at a time? Generally so by what herself. You're saying is, so what you're saying is men <laughs> created the problem. And that's all we needed to know. That's all we needed no, to know. No, 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 no. That's not where I'm going with that. <laughs> oh, my bad. Sorry, guys. I, th I thought that's where she was going. I was like, okay, well, this just answered a lot of questions for me. <laughs> no, Because no. if it would have been a woman, it would have been like, oh, look at the cute little fuzzy thing. You know, we would have given her something then simple. Would, then she would have climbed the top of the nearest tall dude she could find. This is true, <laughs> too. This is true, too. <laughs> Can you imagine that? And like, nope, nope, nope. A whole lot of nope. <laughs> I would have been like, oh, look at the eight legs. It's so cute. What is it? Oh, why is it rearing up at me? What are those fake? Oh, yes, that's those are fake. Bye. Bye. <laughs> no, those look like lips. That's okay. That's cute. Come here, buddy. Go ahead and give it a kiss. <laughs> yeah, no, oh okay. That's gosh. where I draw the line. That's where I draw the line. We are not kissing anything with eight legs and eight eyeballs that could be staring back at me. <laughs> oh, I imagine. But proceed right. about telling us how a man messed us all up for us, please. please. <laughs> no, and it's not you guys that we're going after. We're going after the scientific guys that name these because let me tell you one thing they give names that like nobody can pronounce. Oh, well, the thing is that they were mixing Latin terms with other Latin terms to classify, which is how generally when you find a new species, that's generally how you would do it. Take human. Uh, we're hom homosexuals, correct? Or not homosexuals. What, what is that? Uh, Homo sapiens? Homo sapien. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. I knew that and you didn't know that. How, how Coffee, is this please. I, I, I quit. I'm done. <laughs> Hold on, guys. Hold on. Hold on. Let me take a big old swig of coffee for her and send it to Sweden. Mm. Oh, wow. Oh, no. The show will get better, I promise. I can't believe That's all right, guys. Up. Even if we have to bring you the comedy side of this day, I guess we can do that. We are oh. really going to discuss red knees here in a minute. But uh, wow. <laughs> Crash is going everybody? all I'm done. today. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> I quit. Can so I quit? here we go, guys. So what oh. she's saying is the men have messed it up, and then she gets homo sapien mixed up with something else, and now, and now. <laughs> let me. I, I'm gonna get, oh, after I quit beating myself with things in this closet, I'll be good. So let me give you guys a breakdown. I'm gonna help you guys out, and I'm gonna use the non-scientific terms right now. <laughs> Mexican red knee tarantulas. Um, one thing I did notice while she's over here dying, we're, we're going to have this conversation. Um, one thing about the red knees that I did that, that I did read upon that really had me interested in them was the fact that they are very docile. They said they're very docile tarantulas to have. Yes. And now you said mine is kind of like a extrovert. She's yes. like out there, but she's not. And then the other one that you have, he's out there. Well, not he's, really. He just he's like, he's like, hey, bye, bye. You know, yep. like don't take pictures of me don't look at me yep. so i found it really interesting when you said that you know like she's out there and she's 
going out there and she's like posing for the camera for you. Like I was like, oh, that's so cute. And then you hear that the other one's like, nope. <laughs> So I was okay. like, well. <laughs> okay, to get what I'm saying, um, they were using scientific names, uh, scientific terms go. to for the family, family, the genus, and the species. And all of those would describe the one creature that, that's in front of you. So trying to take all of those Latin terms and put it together, that's why we have such weird names. And then they have the second name, of the um, species name. That's generally, it could be a person's last name. It could be a couple, you know, take a couple of scientists together. They, you know, they're putting the names that really mean a lot to them together. So you have that. Does that make sense of why you have one that sounds like a Harry Potter spell book? That's yeah, all, but it just doesn't other. make sense why they feel like they have to be like all over it. Come on. <laughs> like, okay, so my name is whatever it may be. Oh, let's go find a tarantula and give it the most craziest name in the world and then be like, say tarantula. <laughs> hey, uh, gotcha. Well, uh, Homori uh, could probably be, I don't know for a fact, but it might be a person who discover, discovered them. Or Brachiopelma would be the family and the genus put together. Well, if the man is naming it, I'm assuming he's naming it after his wife something scary so well, actually, actually there is know. a gentleman and i do not remember which one it was i the person who studied uh, birds and i'm trying to think what the term for avian it's it's just too early for me to do a show like this <laughs> coffee bleeds thinking, guys i'm almost done with my coffee i've been drinking it for you over here you know i, I had the first couple of sips for me and i've been drinking the rest for you but you know what why don't we take a, a quick break and i can go get a cup of coffee <laughs> Yes, I like that idea. Let's do that. <laughs> so we don't have any more speech gas, and I'm, I'm mixing uh, uh, homo sapien with homosexual. Uh, I, I thought that was good. It's just me, though. <laughs> I'm glad that was entertaining for you. For our next song, we have Turning the Ship Around by the Tape Machines, Hallman, and featuring Andy De Los Santos. You and me stuck on the ocean now Nothing but waves in this filling in I want to dry up but you Just keep on going, don't you? I don't even know how we got here All my reasoning have disappeared I want to bury the hatchet And find the way back to our home Our home, our home We don't have to drift inside this stone I will not let us fade away It's not a price I want to pay And it's not too late No, we lost our purpose Chasing all that surplus You were all that I need I feel that we can break free We can still go back there To a place with no cares We can turn this ship around We can turn this ship around All the way back home Ourselves. Didn't have much, but nevertheless, we were true to each other. But now we don't even bother. I remember you being hopeful, but the tall waves have worn us down. And slowly we are drowning. That's why you need to come with me, with me, with me. Turn around 180 degrees and cross the sea. I will not let us fade away It's not a price I want to pay And it's not too late No, we lost our purpose Chasing all that surplus You were all that I need I feel that we can break free We can still go back there To a place with no cares We can turn this ship around We can turn this ship around All the way back home
everybody. Welcome back. I am Cracks, your host with yours truly, the best co-host in the world. And that was Aww. Turn the Ship Around by the Tape Machines, Holman featuring Andy De Los Santos. I like how you, they just go with the names and they forget to put the word and. And so as I'm reading, I'm like, wait, that didn't, after I read it, it's not, it doesn't sound right. <laughs> So anyways, let's get back to the tarantula and their docile nature. They're, they really are docile. They were huge for hobby enthusiasts a long time ago. They're huge now. They are unfortunately on the vulnerable list, so they are threatened. Their environment is disappearing. So as many of the cities in Mexico grow, their they're habitat's being lost. So there is that. And not too long ago, there were some illegal shipments of this particular tarantula into the U.S., so I don't know the details of that, so I can't tell you anything about it. So yeah, like I said, this, this tarantula is so well sought out. As soon as they go on sale here in Sweden, they're gone. And I have wanted this particular species for uh, probably about three years now. Three, three going four, something like that. I've wanted them for like ever, um, just because they're an absolute beautiful tarantula, both the male and the female, the males... You know, they live between seven and ten years. The, the females live up until the 20s. Um, so, yeah, it's just a really incredible uh, tarantula to have in general. They are very striking with the, the, red, the red bands around the legs, with the yellow bands around the red, um, with a little bit of red on the abdomen, with a black carapace with a red border. Again, when most people think of a tarantula, they think of this particular tarantula. So it's a very, very popular tarantula to have. I would they're recommend. Very, they're gorgeous. Uh, they I, are. I, I think they're gorgeous. They're definitely a must have. Now you're thinking about getting one of these or a curly hair, correct? Yes. But I decided that I'm going to go with the red need Mexican spider or uh, tarantula, excuse me. Um, I just like their colors and their docile personalities um, that I've read upon, you know, out of all of them. Because I, I really did want a curly haired spider so I could like take it for walks. Like figure out how to walk it on a like, and name a poodle leash. and name and a poodle. poodle and say I'm taking my poodle for a walk and scare the crap out of everybody. <laughs> yeah, that's but if it was a male, I was gonna name it Bob Ross, you know, because I mean, why not? Who does not love Bob Ross? Exactly. And Bob Ross, but, is I mean, the good. poodle would have been funner. I, I think that would have been funner. I can't even speak funner, English, funner. you guys. Butter. Butter, butter, that would have been more fun, butter. you know, walking out. Oh, what you doing? Walking my poodle. And here comes this eight legged tarantula out after people. Oh my gosh. You know, oh, don't get scared. He can smell fear. He bites. <laughs> this is a prime example of doing your research and knowing what you're going to get before you get it. Now, before you get it, yeah. No, because I'm... if you don't, you know, you're going to be bringing home this thing that's going to like eat you in your sleep. <laughs> um, so no, it is no. always good to do your research. <laughs> Tarantulas do not eat people in their sleep. Stop that. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, but they're awake and they like crawl on their faces no. like you see in the movie. No, 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 no. <sighs> Just kidding about that's, that too, guys. Don't be scared. <laughs> oh my goodness. How many people did you just... <laughs> we did not scare anybody. Guys, the only time you could take me serious is when I'm giving you guys the information. I just like to be funny. We are not scaring anybody today. I am the most terrified person of spiders, and I'm not even going to lie about this. I am one of the most people that is most terrified when it comes down to a spider. But ever since I've been talking with you, Cracks, you have got me really o open minded about tarantulas. Oh, good. I'm glad. And I you've got me, her. and you've got me less scared because I go into the pet store. Nope, that's a big pile of nope. <laughs> <laughs> And now I go up there and the kids are like, oh, look at this spider. I go, oh, that's a tarantula. That's a fermectopus. <laughs> and they're just looking at me. Well, how did you know? Because I'm good like that. <laughs> well, all tarantulas to you are fermectopus because you just love fermectopus. You love that name. <laughs> I do. And then like the people at the pet store were looking at me. And they were like, that's a... I was like, yeah, that's a fermectopus. But I, I actually do believe that it was a red knee um, Mexican spider, if that's what it, or a tarantula, that's what it did look like. So, and which is not a fermectopus, guys. I just like the word because I know how to say it now. And it was really beautiful, cracks. But the only thing was, it looks like it's older because it was so much bigger. Like it has done a few molt. Can I ask you a question on that? Oh, um, sure. when, when they molt, I was watching a video. Do they lay on their backs to push your skeleton off? Yes. So how can you tell when you're going into a pet store? Because these are definitely not slings. Right. Slings are itty bitty, guys. These things are huge. Okay. So how, how do I know how old my tarantula is if I'm getting it in a pet store? You don't. 
So I could be getting a spider or a tarantula that's getting ready to kick the bucket. Yep. Oh, no. No, 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 no. <laughs> Get them as slings, guys. That way you know exactly how old your spider is. Because, I mean, um, I noticed that um, a lot of these, they're not expensive. Yep. But they're enough. Yep. And if you get it home and it dies on you, then what? Uh, most likely that's not going to happen. Here's why. Uh, if there is any mature males that happen to, or any males that happen to mature in, in the pet store, it would be the behoo of them to actually find a reputable breeder. Uh, say, hey, I want half those slings. I want the slings from the clutch. Uh, I can't even sit, think or speak today. I really am not on my game today. I need to change that. If you're new to the show, this is generally not how I am. <laughs> You can if you're new to the brain. show, this is how I always am. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Yeah, I'm much for that. Yeah, I was just wondering about that, though, you know, because I didn't know if I should try to, because I was talking to the boyfriend about us getting a tarantula. He's like, well, if you get a tarantula, I'm getting a snake. But what we decided, we came up to a better agreement. We're going to save up and we're going to get a bearded dragon with a tarantula. But not keep them together, guys, because... Um, from what I've been reading, a tarantula can eat a lizard. Well, that is that and, correct? Yes, depending on the size and the species, but yes. Um, but that and your bearded dragon is most likely going to eat the tarantula. Yeah, so I, I just need... They're going to eat each other. It'll be a, a battle royale. So please don't do that. <laughs> be kind. <laughs> be kind to your spiders. As I was explaining today, it's uh, interesting. If you treat a, a tarantula with love and respect, they will show you expressions. It's not an expression with the face, but it's expe expression with body language. And uh, you can tell when they're actually happy. And usually it's when they're food, when there's food in the mouth, at least for my Pervictopus. Um, and I apologize That's if you what hear I'm a Swedish in the background. That is on my end. Uh, again, I have, I have thick concrete walls. That just happens to be how loud a certain someone is. I won't name any names. If you're new to the show, Her brother. Uh, then it'll be a mystery. But if you've you're been around a while, you know exactly who that is. So anyways, I'm totally long story short. Out. <laughs> <laughs> stab, stab, stab. So anyways, uh, yes, I, as I brought up the uh, Brachypelma smithy, aka Homori, versus the Brachypelma uh, erratum. The erratum does not have the black on the carapace like the homori for the, the brachypelma homori. The knees are furrier. Uh, the uh, legs have more color to them. And that's uh, that's just about it. That's about all you can really, how you can really tell the difference. Uh, the uh, erratum's legs are spindlier. They're, again, they're not as fuzzy. Uh, the tarantula does not seem to be as stocky as the homori. So again, this is just one of those things where if you're unsure, there's always Google, there's always Wikia, there's also the arachnoboards. boards. Uh, for things like this, I would definitely recommend the arachnoboards. boards. For advice, I would just definitely go to your vet or check out any of the YouTubers that have been online. Or uh, you can always go back. If you're buying a tarantula from a retro, a retro, I always have a problem with that word. <laughs> respectable. Uh, a respectable breeder. Uh, there's a there good word. Go. There you go. A respectable breeder. If you're buying a uh, tarantula from one of them, you can go to them for good advice. Uh, again, there's a lot of misinformation, but I think in this day and age, it's fading out. I think it's going away, uh, mainly because, uh, you know, we, there's the internet. Um, back in the day, they didn't have the internet. And I just got into the discussion with somebody not too long ago. Uh, did you know that spiders uh, back in the 50s, 60s, and even up into the 70s had a higher survival rate than they do now in our in our mail system? You know, I honestly can believe that because of how much the world has changed since then. You look at it, we didn't have global warming, we didn't have this, we didn't have that. A lot of places weren't even taken over for being built. You know I what I mean? Say, like the, I was going to say, global warming has nothing to do with the mail system. <laughs> well, you never know. <laughs> global warming, people. I go to global warming for everything. And then when people <laughs> ask me questions, I'm like, it's 2020's fault for everything. So if I sound uneducated, I'm Ooh, I hear a puppy. I heard a puppy. I'm muting her. Sorry. That was, uh, that's fine. But the reason why it was is because back then the crates came in wooden boxes. They also were handled with a, a bit more care. It's not so easy to throw a wooden box in it than it is in, in an envelope, to, to say the least. They had a higher survival rate, but the care was not as good. And here's why. Uh, they used to put sponges in the uh, water dishes. No, this was to keep humidity in the box. This, is, this was to help to keep the humidity so they didn't dry out as quickly. But for some reason, a strange rumor had started, and I don't know where it has come from, but the pet shop owners started saying that 
that's how tarantulas drink at one point in time. That's simply not true. A tarantula can get its water from its substrate all the way from the water dish. I've seen my formectopus drink. I've seen my uh, cambergi drink straight from the water dish. So they need fresh water all the time. And think of fresh as maybe they just want a little bit of t- taste of that cocoa fiber in their water dish. I don't know. <laughs> Some of them do pack it full. But that's where, where it had started was back in the day, uh, shippers and breeders used to put sponges in the in the water dishes. Now we have paper towels. Paper towels work so much better. And of course, our shipping methods have changed quite a bit as well. Back in the day, they weren't tossed around. They weren't thrown around. And uh, because of the lack of heat packs back then, they were only shipped during certain parts of the year. So they would have to literally pay attention to those things. It's kind of interesting how things have evolved. But getting back to what I was saying, because of the internet, we no longer have to rely on word of mouth. We can actually just go straight to the internet, figure things out. Uh, when it comes to opinions or advice for certain keepings, Stay away from the forums, and here's why. Because forums are filled with ideas and egos. You know, everybody's got an ego. Everybody's, and there's, you're going to find many who are going to say, well, if you don't do it this way, it's wrong. And uh, that, that can be simply wrong. And many, to- and many times, I've, in many cases, I've seen it be wrong completely. So uh, definitely uh, get your advice from, I would say, experienced keepers, uh, such as the Trencha Collective, giving them a nice shout out because of allowing me to use the march. Uh, as well as uh, the Dark Den, uh, Tarantula Dan, Tarantula Cat, Deadly Tarantula Girl. Uh, there, like I said, there is a slew of people out there. Tom Tom Morgan, Sp- uh, Tom Morgan Spiders as well. I mean, there, again, there's a slew of people out there. And we all had to start somewhere. And having a Brachypelma homori is an excellent beginner's tarantula. Probably because you can screw up a lot. And they're very forgiving. Now, um, I think we spoke on a lot of bit. How about we take another quick break and uh, get another song going so I can actually drink a little bit more coffee. You can tell I'm waking up now. <laughs> Best part of waking up is coffee in the cup. <laughs> oh, nice. Oh, sorry. We're on break. <laughs> we'll be back. Uh, our next coming song is I Don't Believe You by Mind Me featuring Emmy. This might be over
welcome back, everybody. That was I Don't Believe You by My Me featuring Emmy. I am Cracks, your host with yours truly. It is Monday morning. It is almost seven o'clock as we speak. And I am just here to say thank you all for tuning in and listening. If you guys weren't here uh, to listen to us ramble and have our, our fun chat uh, and us telling you a, a bit of information that we have, uh, again, the show wouldn't be the, the way it is. You guys are great. You guys make everything, uh, you make the whole show go around. I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart for being here. Now, we were talking about something a little bit in the break. We were talking about the illegal pet trade and uh, what she she was wondering, truly, you were wondering what brown boxing was. Uh, brown boxing is when you ship an animal without marking it. And it's usually in a brown box, a brown shipping box. Uh, very easy with the uh, tarantula slings. You can do that very easily with tarantula slings. And uh, unfortunately, it is a practice. It is a practice generally to smuggle the illegal breeds across either the U.S. lines or across uh, EU into non-EU countries or vice versa. And it's not a practice I would ever, ever support. Never in my life. I would never, ever support that. And here's why. It has a huge environmental impact on the wild. If you don't believe me, look at, uh, well, look at the Pokeotherias, and then you can look at the Brachypelmas. And uh, as I was saying, the um, Homori is on the, the vulnerability list. Now, I was right. We did double check. Uh, the Smithy used to be, there used to be Smithy and Homori, and now they've, because there was really no difference, except for maybe some what we'd call variants, which means uh, slight differences. Uh, yeah, that there was no real definite definition. So that now they're all Homori, but it's the Atrium, the Brachypelma Atrium. That is it uh, Atrium? I, I, it doesn't that sound right coming off my tongue. I could be saying it very, very wrong. So again, if you guys are out there listening, feel free to correct me. I have no problems with that. I'll correct you. Now, you were, you were also wondering about slings. Yes, you do have to separate the slings because if you don't they'll eat each other there's no true communal tarantula out there except for pokeotherias tend to be they can be managed but there's still a lot of cannibalism i think it's the um it's the belforias that seem to be the, the true communal um and, and i know there's others out there but not too many again go talk to somebody who's a bit more experienced in that in in communals than i am because i i definitely i'm not a communal person uh it's uh, it's not that i don't find them uh, pretty or anything like that. I just find them to be a lot of work and it takes a lot of time. And I'm, I'm just, I have no patience for that. Prime example of me not having patience, my, I usually, it's the slings that usually bite me, but I, I've been bit twice last year. So that should tell you that I'm o- almost always in a hurry and I'm not really paying attention. So a communal would be a very bad idea for somebody of my capability. What else? What else would, did you want to talk about? Um, I wanted to talk about the behaviors um, when they bite, because you were saying you've been bit. And now um, one thing about the red knee that I found really interesting, they are slightly venomous to humans. Oh, of and, course. And all, they are... All tarantulas. All, all, like all you spiders. said, they're very docile. Oh, you yeah. You know, um, they, but the, they said the fangs can cause the puncture wounds and it can cause an infection if you don't properly take care of it and your allergies could get worse to them. How would you recommend if somebody got bit, how would you recommend that they take care of it so they don't get infected other than Benadryl uh, for allergies? How would you oh, no. Um, uh, no. recommend uh, that too? No, I would never recommend that. I'd recommend go to the doctor immediately. You do not know how you're going to react to the venom. You heard it there first, guys, like me. I would be the dumb one, like, give me the Benadryl, and I'm just going to go to bed, and then, like, watch my hand be, like, 10 times bigger than what it is. That would be me. <laughs> uh, here's the thing. From personal experience, I, so I'm diagnosed with sensitivity. I'm hypersensitive to most venom. Uh, we don't know which venoms I'm really not reactive to, uh, and trust me, I, I'm not going to pay all that money to find out. So just play it safe for my, for my part. And what does that mean? That means that for a normal person, the venom at lasting may last for four hours. I'm going to last six to eight hours and there's going to be swelling where there's normally wouldn't be swelling and redness and all of that. So I'm having a slight allergic, what we call a slight allergic reaction. Okay. So one day I get bit and it goes south. How would I deal with that? So this is what I mean. Always, always, always seek medical attention. And now, mind you, if you're a young, healthy person, and I'm not talking about a kid, if it was a kid getting bit, immediately go to a doctor. Because again, you do not know how they're going to react. Everybody reacts a little different. 
Now, typically, New Worlds do not have the potency in the venom. Their main way of hunting is stabbing the prey to death with those large fangs. Uh, yeah. I know it sounds gruesome. It sounds cruel, but that's just how it is. I also uh, learned that I also understand that they kick hairs, too, if they feel yes, like they're being yes. bothered. So they'll kick the hair from their stomach and yes. their back legs. Uh, generally, that's the first uh, go-to. Now, not all New Worlds have that type of hair. They can also have, I think it's type 2 or type 3. Don't quote me on which one those are. But where they have to brush up against you to, like a porcupine. But all urticating hairs are not pleasant. There is no, You're not going to get out of that one. Uh, did you know the old itching powder used to be tarantula hair? Really? Back in the 40s. You're, I'm thinking 30s, 40s, maybe in the 20s. Wow, I did not know that. Yeah, no, it's oh, actually... Here's some, here's some tarantula hair. Go witch. <laughs> <laughs> well, it would stick and it wouldn't come off. No, this is why many handlers are starting to, to come to realize, please use goggles when you're handle not handling, but when you're taking care of, you're cleaning, and you're doing general maintenance on a, a tarantula with urticating hairs because those hairs are everywhere in that enclosure. And it, just breathe on it wrong. They're very light, so they can just be brushed up by a breath. It doesn't have to have the tarantula kick hairs at you. In a defensive manner, it just means that you're in a closure that they've littered this area. Even ants do not find it pleasant, so they'll try and stay away from it as much as possible. But uh, ants will also tear apart a tarantula. So if you've got ants in your house, uh, make, make sure that they're not bothering your tarantulas. But without further ado, yes, definitely do not handle without care. What I mean is always pay attention to what is their attitude. Have they recently molted? Because if they recently molted, that, that means all of that hair is in there. But yeah, urticating hairs is no joke. It burns, it stings. It can do some real bad damage to your eyes if it gets in your eyes. So again, just, it's not worth it. Just don't breathe on your tarantula. <laughs> Breathing on tarantulas is not fun for them anyways, but uh, uh, don't startle them too much. Uh, generally, that is the first go-to they go to for defense. Uh, fangs is usually last. I've been unlucky. I've had where the new world will whip around and use their fangs before before they start kicking hairs. So it, that's just how it goes. Tarantulas have various different uh, personalities. That in itself is, is an obstacle. You have to figure out how you're going to get around it. Uh, we just discussed. I have two homori that I've received. Probably from the same clutch. Again, thank you Jungle Brothers. I love them both very much. And now you have one named after me. And well, not after me anymore. But after a name I just gave it myself. You know. Brachiosaurus. Hermonica. Yes, yes. Now you have one of those and she's just like me too. Like getting all bold and feisty and Yep. Those are my spirit those are my spirit ones. I hope I hope I get luck in getting a tarantula that has personality. No, I, I hope you do too. And Homori actually is a really good tarantula for, for that. But they tend to kick hairs before they bite. Unlike some tarantulas. Looking over at my uh boquette over there. But it's an S boquette. And um, I believe that's how you pronounce the name. It's how I pronounce it anyways. They're the ones that bit me. And uh, of course, you know, they couldn't uh, have kicked hairs as a warning. No, no. They went straight with the fangs and slapped the crap out of me. And I'm like, really? Really? What did I ever do to you? And they're like, basically, I'm invading their space. And I was like, well, I just wanted to give you food. And they're like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> you're, you're still in my space. Smack. <laughs> But the only problem would be is if I seen the food, then I'd actually be happy that I had the food. So I don't know what's up with that. Like, I would not smack you away for delivering me food. I'd be like, oh, thanks. And then no. after I get done eating, if I'm still moody, then I'd smack somebody, you know. <laughs> Why not? Oh, that's you. That's you. That's not the tarantula. Tarantula's a little different. You gotta give them, you gotta give them, a, little, give you gotta them, give them a little credit. I give them credit. They, they, the more we talk about them, though, the more I can relate to these guys. And I'm totally on board with this. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine you are. I imagine you are. Like I said, it's just something that you have to take into account when you're getting a tarantula. You know what's really crazy? I have sat in the closet this whole entire show. <laughs> well, how about this? We take another quick break and get to another song. The New Crave by Cyan. Where do we go from? Where do we go from here? No one can save us, save us from keeping clean. I don't want to lose you, I don't want to lose you now. Cause there is only one thing, only one thing on my mind. Hey, 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 I just want to see you on my new 
Welcome back, everybody. Thank you for sticking around. That was New Crave by San. I am Craig, your host. We have yours truly with us on this wonderful Yay. morning. It is Monday morning. It is almost 7.15 now. Uh, oh, I know. We're, we're just trucking along, aren't we? So much we for are. Our, so much for a 45-minute show. I mean, this, this is going a little bit longer than expected. So um, we got to make it good then. <laughs> we were talking about your future tarantula you want to tell me about what you're what you're thinking about doing yeah well i was reading up on the one that we're talking about the brachia pelma homari did i say that right yay oh hold on hold on hold on i i got sound effects i found buttons thank you thank you thank you <laughs> it's no longer a brachiosaurus harmonica it is a brachia palmi Palma Harmari. So see, I only can say it right once. So Amari. that has to be in the take. That has to be in the take because I said it right. We always have to have that one in there. It's Homori. Um, Homori. Homori. Oh, Homori. 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 For Mictopus. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> Guys, like I butchered the Formictopus name. I, I just got to tell you guys this real quick before I tell you about the tarantula that I'm looking into getting. Um, I butchered Formictopus. Like I couldn't even say it. I thought it was like Formictopus pus. And like I couldn't even say it. And she's like, you're killing it. And she calls me. She calls me in on my show. It's Formictopus. And I was like, yeah, what she said. So I <laughs> finally learned it. I wrote it all down. I have the letter four. And then I spelled the word Mick. And then duh. And then puss. For Mictopus. And that's how I learned how to say for Mictopus. So I was like really, really excited when I could learn how to say for Mictopus and their fossa day. I was like, their fossa day, you know, and I got really, really excited learning all this. So now I'm learning a new word and I didn't even really know how to say it before. Now I can say it. But anyways, that's not the point. One second, guys. I am sorry. It is. Ladies and gentlemen, that okay. was our yours truly having some <laughs> technical sorry. difficulties. I am so sorry for that, guys. I had to mute my mic for a second and just yell. 
<laughs> I am so sorry for that. He's not used to being with me when I do podcasting, so he doesn't know how it goes. And then I'm like, I need silence. And his voice travels, travels. And now I have a dog down here snoring at my feet. I have him yelling out there, a dog snoring. I've got all the noises on vacation that is just like insane right now. But again, I do apologize for that, guys. But I was looking at getting the Mexican red knee spider. Um, just different things about it really drew me to the spider. Not only, number one, is it from Mexico, and I'm Latina, and my family's from Mexico. I thought that was really cool, though, you know? Like, oh, hey, cool, we have our own tarantulas. But the coloring and the personality is what really drew me in. And then, like Cracks was saying, it's a low-maintenance care. And being a first-time tarantula owner, that's going to be a big thing. Because we don't know really how to care for tarantulas. I've been watching videos and everything else. And I promise, guys, I will learn the care before I bring home a tarantula. I'm not just going to bring home a tarantula and not know the care. Um, oh, you mean <laughs> that could be like uh, 50% of the <laughs> no. new owner? That no. could be like that mom. Oh, I could tell you so many horror stories about how I've seen more mom, uh, you know, the, the um, doting mothers who buy their kids, or usually it's a son, a tarantula, know nothing of what they're getting, spend way too much money at the pet store. And I'm just like, sitting here thinking, why didn't you just Google it? Yeah, no, that's what I want to make sure that I do is I do all my research and then I help him with the research. That way we know what we have to do with our pet tarantula and guess what when we get our red new tarantula i'm gonna already tell you guys this now it already has a name it's already a special name and it's none other than cracks the uh -huh. first tarantula is gonna be cracks because uh -huh. she is the one that's actually gotten me so i'm not terrified i had a big old spider crawling on me the other day guys and trust me i don't believe it was harmed i think it still lived i'm not sure but I'm almost positive. I flicked it off of me because I didn't know what it was. And I flicked it and he flew. And he was a big spider and it was not a tarantula. So therefore, <laughs> I don't know what it was, but it went flying. And that's all I'm saying. Poor baby. Uh, Poor baby. <laughs> we're hoping, he probably killed it. I, I'm almost, I'm almost it certain it made it. But I, I heard, I think I heard it hit the wall. I'm not sure. Oh. It just scared the crap out of me. I'm sorry. Yeah, I can guarantee like, you at that point. <laughs> the, the, the like, it just live. like, I think it might have knocked it unconscious because that thing was Ooh. huge. That thing was bigger than my betta fish. I'm just saying. <laughs> oh, that's a large spider. Oh. Yeah, he was huge. And he was like right on me in the middle of my sleep. I was like, what is this flick? And then you hear thunk. And I was like, oh, that was not good. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, but I was so proud of myself. I didn't kill it. I didn't kill it on purpose. If I did kill it, it wasn't on purpose. Well, you were startled in your sleep. I'll give you that. Yeah, I wasn't even fully awake and I felt something on me and I thought it was a dog. So, you know, like I did it and then it started doing it again. I just went flick. And then I was like, oh crap. <laughs> Poor thing. I should have got a cup and like tried to catch it and take it outside. But I mean. Catch cup. Hashtag we, catch cup. Is save a life hashtag like, catch cup. It's it's gonna be hashtag not all superheroes wear capes. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor Spider Man. Poor Spider Man had a poor break in the room. That's all I'm saying. If I have a tarantula, guys, I'm not gonna do that with my tarantula. I'm gonna be very very careful with my tarantula because I know how delicate these are. And then one thing I also want to remind you guys: if you guys are just tuning in for the first time, we have discussed on the show before how delicate tarantulas are never handle your tarantula they can fall and everything is like down in the booty area and if it breaks they're gonna they're gonna die <laughs> and i'm being dead serious about that That's like i don't know what they call the butt you know they call the butt like their stomachs down there their hearts down there their brains down there everything is in their butt i yes. learned this the other day so you don't want to drop your tarantula it's not like if you drop it, I mean, it's going to be a pop lock and drop and that tarantula is going to be dead. You don't want to do that, guys. You want to be super, super careful. And all seriousness, you want to be super careful. Don't handle, like Crack said, always make sure you have your catch cup. Um, I've been, Like I said, I've been watching a lot of videos because I want to know how to present an environment to which my tarantula is going to be happy for many years. And that's something I want to touch on is when you do a uh, tarantula, when you work on a tarantula enclosure, uh, it's extremely relaxing because you get to do whatever you want. I've seen everything from the movie Aliens, uh, the movie Predator, to Pirates oh, of the Caribbean. 
Uh, you, you could find so many. But somebody even did an Indiana Jones lost ark. And that's yeah, for their dude. enclosure? Yes, that is for the enclosure, but that's for an adult. Uh, Crocs, you, you like are... Spongebob? <laughs> do I like what? Spongebob? No. I, I was going to say I could do a Spongebob. <gasps> oh, oh, I got a really good idea. We can make it like it's an underwater thing and my spider's a swimming tarantula. <gasps> I'll go get like little she, dolphins she, and whales. She's talking about not actually using water. Making an enclosure, not like drowning my spider. I, I can promise you guys that. <laughs> you might want to put that in there as a clause. Yeah. <laughs> The clause is under the water theme, and my tarantula is going to be like the water monster. That's oh my gosh! Oh, that would be real cool. That would just, oh my gosh! That's, that's actually sounds pretty good. You name it the crack. And I was like, come here, cracks, and then it's going to come to me. Like you guys cannot train spiders, but watch, I am going to be a millionaire because I'm going to teach you guys how to train a tarantula. <laughs> I again, I, you know, it was said once before, and I'll and I'll even say. It. If I will pay to see if you could actually teach your tarantula to stay. I will. I'm going to teach it to sit. I'm going to teach it to roll over. <laughs> I'm going to teach it to make a noise without throwing hairs. I'm going to teach my tarantula a lot of tricks. You guys just okay. give me time. And when I walk up to the glass, I'm going to hold up my hand and it's going to give me a, a high leg. A high five. So, so it, you're going to teach your tarantula to give you, uh, to throw up its legs so it can give mm -hmm. you a threat posture. Remember, yeah. we talked about this. <laughs> I got this, guys. It's not going to be a threat because he's going to be trained and he's going to get rewarded or she's going to get rewarded big time. We're going to make sure that we chop the heads of the mealworms and drop in some mealworms while oh, training my tarantula. Because let me tell you one thing, my tarantula is going to be the coolest one on the block. No, you get to a certain point, you don't have to pre-kill your food, but uh, for the... For during the early stages, they're sling to early stages. Yeah, you're definitely slings to early juveniles. You're going to have to, and you're also at the pre kill whenever you want to feed and it's coming close to them to molt. Um, you, you never know, they might want to eat many times, they don't, but you don't want a live uh prey item in there when they're about to molt because they're well, the most sensitive. Then they can't, they cannot defend themselves against the yeah, invading. I've seen that. Yeah, that's actually really horrifying and it's a huge mistake, but unfortunately, some people still do it, so please don't do that. Things. Um, yeah, so, it, it looked terrifying for them yesterday. I was watching videos on the red knees because yep. I've never seen a malt before. And when I, t when I tell you guys I'm trying to roll over, that's what they do when they malt. So it's going to be easy. We're just going to be like, Act, play malting. And that's how I'm going to tell them, play malting. And then it's going to just roll over and start kicking. <laughs> and it was an off. But after malt, it's still going to roll over just to get a treat. I, I'm, I'm going to videotape all this and I will be a millionaire training my tarantula. <laughs> I doubt that. <laughs> but good try. Good try. You will have a fat tarantula. On the end. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. We're not calling it a fat tarantula, guys. That's just rude. We don't judge on weight. We are going to have a fluffy tarantula. Uh, it's not flat. It's fluffy. <laughs> In this case, it, it is. Be very fluffy. <laughs> and when my tarantula walks it's going to be a diva walk and she's going to be shaking them hips in her with her brain and her stomach and everything else while she's walking she's just going to be swaying it, now how dare you generalize a, a gender of a tarantula or he's going to be swaying it, it could be that what what if they don't want to be he or she well it's going to be a tarantula then ladies <laughs> and gentlemen it is 2020 oh. my tarantula is neither a male or a female <laughs> My tarantula is a tarantula. Your, your tarantula is a brachiosaurus. But that's exactly it. It's 2020. I can identify what a blood ever. My brachiosaurus tarantula is a brachiosaurus. Now I got my pet dinosaur too. I wonder, no. you know, you no, know, Prax, I was like just thinking about that. I wonder if tarantulas were back in the dinosaur days. Oh yeah, they were. But not in the way we think they were. I wonder if they were bigger, like... Most likely. Come here, T-Rex, um, I'm going to eat you. You know, my big, like, come here. We're really going to play arachnid now. She's going to look it up. I am, too. Tarantulas yes. from dinosaur years. Please. Okay. Sorry, guys. I was getting ready to ask how to spell tarantula. <laughs> dinosaur era. Whoa! Whoa! I am not even going to lie. Those things are huge. And the spiders back in the prehistoric days, guys, they had a tail almost like a scorpion. At least that's what the, the theory is. I, I don't know if there's absolute evidence of that or not. I, I'm a little 
skeptical. You know, I, I don't know. Everything evolves eventually. Oh, they have some that are itty bitty too. Like some of these tarantulas are stuck in amber. Yeah. Like they've actually got some where they're actually in the amber. And that's really cool looking too. Okay, so what I found here, the fossilization of a tarantula is about the size that they are now. No, um, no, no, not even close. I'm looking at the... You the, don't think so? They're almost one meter long, which is about three feet. Yeah, okay. See, no, see, I can't have a tarantula that big. <laughs> I imagine he, I imagine not. Uh, but uh, one of the largest feeders ever to existed, excluding the Goliath breeding tarantula, it was, which is a maximum leg span of about 12 inches or 30 centimeters. Uh, the Mega, the Meg Arcane, that was a Meg Arcana, might be a Meg Arcana, but yeah, they're quite huge. Um, 13.3 inches. So that's over a foot long. Yep. That is bigger than a Subway sandwich, guys. Yep. And if you guys don't know what a Subway sandwich is, Google it. 12 inch Subway. And it's like an inch and point, it's 1.3 inches bigger than that. You do realize we have the Goliath Barrier, which does hit that. Oh, so there is a real one that does that right now? Yes. It's 12 inches. 10 oh. to 12 inches on average. That's a pile of note for me. No, I like the small ones. <sighs> It, well, if it wasn't for their delicate uh, dependence, uh, I, I can't monitor it like if they need. So, again, it's out, outside my scope of capability. Okay, I'm not going to lie. He is kind of cute. The bird-killing Goliath. <laughs> Actually, that's a, a, that's a false name. It's a false name. And we and next show, we will be talking about the Therifasa, the Therifasa Blondie, which is the Goliath bird eater. Yeah, we will be talking about that on the next show. So, yeah, again, oh, that would God, definitely be, right uh, yes. <laughs> they're fossa so we're gonna... <laughs> No, they're f just that they're fossa blondie, not their fossa day. Their fossa day is, is the family. Oh, they're fossa blondie. They're fossa blondie, blondie yes. See? Which is, uh, actually, how about we take another quick break before we wrap things up? All right. right uh, so we have... Uh, Look Into My Eyes by Graylin and A Sensation of You by Alan Nova. I'm staring through your window looking up at the stars, up at the stars. I'm caught inside a loop where I can get to your heart, get to your heart. How much I want it, that's how bad I need it. You've got a 
Welcome back, everybody. That was Look Into My Eyes by Graylin and Sensation of You by Alan Nova. It is good to have you and everybody here. Thank you for tuning in. I appreciate it. So we've talked about the Hamori for quite some time, and now we're going to get into some of the funner stuff. Funner. I, I speak English, I promise. <laughs> the fun stuff. You? Yes, I try. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> oh, to get back to what we were saying, uh, if you guys like what we do here on our show, I'm trying to get the official website together, uh, and I'm trying to get the Patreon up and running, and also the channel Spooner and things, get that going as well. So that way you can find Exotics Radio regularly, either on Spotify or on YouTube. And so it'll be easy for you guys to hear the content. Uh, but also on the Patreon, uh, eventually we'll implement uh, earlier shows. So we'll call it, the, you know, the early bird. And you guys can hear about the various different shows that we have, the various different keeping uh, advice that we have, because we do bring people on. Um, I still have to edit finish editing but what has done what what i've done is i've given up trying to get the error to correct i'm just i'm 
found the original recording, so I'm going to be editing the recording with uh, Amanda Arach Jessica Arachnid is not Amanda Arachnid. Wow. Uh, Jessica, I'm sorry. <laughs> She's probably going to kill we me. We love you, one. Jessica. And with Reptadil as well. Uh, we had them both on, on our show one time. And it was a great show. Unfortunately, my potato made a big error and it. My uh, external hard drive where I kept everything had arrowed out. So that's why if, you've been, if you guys have been wondering where these shows have been, that's where it's been. I've been focusing on trying to get that up. But unfortunately, it, it, and it didn't work out. So now I'm stuck with uh, having to redo everything and uh, try to get these recordings up and running. So on the Patreon, what I was trying to say on the Patreon, you'd be able to see that. And the Patreon price is once the Patreon page is up. It's not up yet, but once it is up, will be $2.50 a month to get the early shows. You get the one show prior to the week. So basically... You guys know we were we release three shows a week, uh, and so you'll be hearing uh, basically two shows before the other person, or for the non-subscribers. And for everybody who pays the five dollar fee, we'll get a, the whole week in advance. They get get everything released that week. And so basically, what we're trying to do is get you guys the, as much content as possible. Let you guys chill out and relax. Again, for two dollars fifty cents a month. Or you get to get uh, two shows for, for the full five dollars you get for the full week, and so and trying to get that up and running, and then also trying to get the official web page so you guys can find us there as well as you know see it, the new photos coming up of the slings um, and everybody else who's molted and matured. And what else? What else is there? And for six fifty, you guys can get my comedy all week long. Remember that if you guys like my comedy on the Patreon, you could pay six fifty, and you get my comedy for a whole entire week. <laughs> oh, so in other words, nothing. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa! Good night, everybody. I'm about to get my ass kicked. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, Podbean. It's or YouTube. Let's edit that. <laughs> It's no, okay, you two. It's gonna stay in. <laughs> it's okay, cause guess what? She's not about ready to get her booty kicked, but she's about ready to get some comedy going up in here. Oh, I'm gonna no. sing us a song on our way out today. Oh, you are just not for gonna no, radio. No, no, you are. Not, and for no. seven fifty, I will sing an outro every time. For seven fifty, guys, seven fifty. You are saving a tarantula's life for seven fifty a week. A week, seven fifty a week. A month, a month, seven fifty a week, guys. And you're saving <laughs> and feeding one tarantula. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, so oh. fine. For seven fifty for one month, you can feed and save a homeless tarantula. Now I feel like we need the depressing music that you would get on the commercial. I I've got something for you. Yeah, that's sad. What if the bird ate the tarantula? No, we can't do that, guys. We can't do that. <laughs> oh my goodness, this has been a fun show. So we're I'm going to wrap up. Fun. Uh, of course, I had fun. I, had a, I always have a blast when you're around. Uh, so everybody, Aww. thank you for tuning in. Uh, I am Cracks, your host. I, we're going to be signing out with two songs, and you also have yours truly. If you want to say goodbye, I do. And don't forget, guys, it's Homo Sapiens. Much love to you. Yeah, next time <laughs> I knew, on the I show. Knew it. I knew it was going to come love, back guys. <laughs> there is Much such love. A... Oh, I have so many things to say right now. Oh, and one more thing. And one more thing. See, <laughs> she can't say it now because she's like, oh, crap, I got to edit all that. And she doesn't want to edit all that. So I know what I'm doing. But I do want to thank you guys for being here and listening with us. You guys are absolutely amazing. Um, she told me that you guys had been requesting something like this. So we're just glad. Keep the request coming in on what you guys want to talk about. And remember, it doesn't always have to be a tarantulas. It could be snakes. It could be bearded dragons. It could be whatever you want it to be. And that's a big thing too. But tarantula talk is a lot of fun. I, I've enjoyed it. Now, if it's snake talk, we're going to probably have to call Raptor Dylan. But because I'm not getting, I'm not getting convinced with anything with a snake. Um, I got convinced with a tarantula and that's good enough for me. Um, but guys, we really do love and appreciate you guys so very much. Um, thank you for letting my humor get in the way a little bit today and just having a little bit of fun with it. So until we see you next time, take care. God bless. Be safe.
Ow. And I also, oh, I heard that. That's, that didn't sound so great. I, I also want to get the door. <laughs> no, you're locked in. No. Um, <laughs> and sit. <laughs> <laughs> nope. I'm leaving that in. I'm almost in tears. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, I'm going to move on. Uh, I want to give a great shout out to Jungle Brothers, who has a, yeah. they don't have a website. It will be coming soon. I asked them about it, but they do have Instagram is Jungle Bros, basically Jungles Bros. <laughs> no uh, spaces or anything like that. So you're very easy to find them. Or you can get them, find them at their Gmail, which is junglesbro at gmail.com. And uh, yeah, there you go. Again, a great company. Go check them out. My babies came in. They were wonderful. So I wanted to say thank you to them. Maybe one of these days we can get them on the show tell them, and have them visit and tell us a bit about their business and a bit about more about their, their knowledge and tarantulas. I'm pretty sure it surpasses mine. So anyways, thank you all for coming. I appreciate each and every one of you. You guys are great. Uh, thank you again. Truly, are you okay? You look like you're about I, to die here. I thought we had a live crowd in here, so I typed it out in the comments. <laughs> oh my gosh, you did. <laughs> I just said um, I was like, it's like wait there. a second. <laughs> <laughs> she did. She typed out the name Jungle Bros in the chat because uh, I normally did, guys. Like, that's what you would do for a live show. But this is not a live show. This is a pre-recording. Uh, <sighs> I did, it's a pre-recording on a Monday morning of that. So anyways. <laughs> it's bedtime. It's it's bedtime for you, and it is uh, time for me to go drink some more coffee. And so, anyways, thank you all for coming. I appreciate it. We have two songs to finish off our show here, which is You Get All of Me by Catnip featuring Aston Tour and No Sugar Coated <laughs> Love by Tape Machines featuring Jowen and Ami. Thank you all again. I will see you again sometime. And, hey, we had a great time. Hey, doll. Yes, we did. Take care, guys.